Hi there, my magical star beings. This is Psychic Siren Tarot, and welcome to the channel. In today's reading, we're going to be taking a look at assumptions people make about you based off your style and aesthetic. So please be aware that this is a general reading. Only take what resonates, leave the rest, because there are so many of you watching with so many different styles and aesthetics. So keep that in mind. So we have three piles to choose from. For pile number one, we have the blue lace agate heart with the fitness fan. For pile number two, we have pyrite with the lucky star. And for pile number three, we have rose quartz with the goddess. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to pick a pile. Pick whichever pile you're most drawn to, the one that is calling out to your soul the most, and that will be a pile for today. But of course, if you're drawn to more than one pile, there may be more messages there for you. Once you're done picking a pile, please find me timestamps for your pile in the description box below, and then I'll see you at your reading. Hi there, my pile number ones. If you chose the blue lace agate crystal and the fitness fan, then this is your reading. We're going to be taking a look at assumptions people make about you based off your style and aesthetic. So please be aware that this is a general reading. Only take what resonates, leave the rest, especially because we all have different styles. So let's get started with your reading. Spirit guides of pile number ones. Spirit guides of pile number ones. What assumptions do people make about them based off their style and aesthetic? So we're first going to analyze your style and then we're going to look at the assumptions they make based off this. So their style and aesthetic, please. Assumptions they make based off this. We have the bubblegum babe. I always think this says the bubblegum babe. It's bu the bubblegum Brit. <laughs> Sorry. But maybe you're seen as like a babe to others. <laughs> okay, then we have the badass. Then we have the snake charmer. And then last but not least, we have the graphic tee. At the back of the deck, we do have the spotlight. So let me just check that all these cards are in frame, analyze what I see here, and I'll tell you exactly what I see. So most of you could have a personal style that is quite sporty or casual in nature. Right, and I'm seeing like sneakers, of course, those that you know dress up a little bit more in sporty wear or casual wear, like jeans and a t shirt. And I, I kind of feel like this is my pile of people that dress up in in like a normal way, usually. Like, usually, you're just normal, you're just chilled, you're just laid back when it comes to your style. There is still a sense of sexiness to it and a sense of you adding a little bit of your personality to the clothes you wear daily, but you're also coming across as very chilled and laid back in the way that you dress where it's not overdone. You may, for some of you, be those types of people that don't go all out in your daily life, you know, when it comes to the way you dress up. But you may make it up for it in other ways. So, for example, I'm seeing those that, you know, just dress up in a casual way and do, like, a little bit of makeup, like a natural makeup look and, you know, make your hair look at least a little bit nice. Um, and still wear clothes that are quite stylish, even if they're more casual. Still wear clothes that feel good on you, that make you feel confident. The red here is making me think of confidence for some reason. Confident and good about yourself. Even if you're just wearing something casual. I'm even seeing oversized sweaters. You know, this pile could like to wear oversized sweaters. Um, clothes that are more casual but fit well in your body and show off the right areas of your body. 
So there's still a sense of sexiness here and a still a sense of you even if it's quite casual. I'm seeing some of you could have more of the quote-unquote clean girl aesthetic where even if it's more casual, it still looks good on your body. Some of you may tailor your clothes so that it fits well on you or wear clothes that feel good on your body where you feel confident in it. And you may make up for it in ways of always looking put together, even if you're still showing up quite casually in your daily life. And, you know, making sure you're put together, you're clean, you're neat, you're tidy, you're paying attention to all the details, like Virgo energy, analytical, taking care of the details, looking good from head to toe, even if it's casual, right? And then I'm seeing some of you wear like work clothes in your daily life. If you go to work or school, maybe you have a sort of uniform that you have to wear, but then you still add some sense of personal style to the way that you dress, as I said before. So you still add a touch of you to it if you are even not wearing a uniform, but having to follow a specific criteria of how you are meant to be dressed in a professional setting. That's not for everybody, but for some, okay? And you could still look quite sexy and quite put together in ways or quite good in ways, even if it's still the criteria you have to dress according to or uniform in a work setting or school setting. Um, but then I feel like when it's the weekend or when it's like a special event or something you want to go to where you want to look extra good, then you go all out and maybe you get, get your makeup done, your hair done, you get dressed nicely, like in very good clothes, clothes that feel sexy on you, clothes that feel fun, that almost like put you in the spotlight. Um, I'm almost getting with this pile, you can go from zero to a hundred, you can uh, pretty much transform your whole look. Some of you like to switch between aesthetics and styles based on the way you feel that day. But then when you really go all out, it's like people can see that you're in the spotlight. Now all the shine is on you and you're you're seen as so sexy, you're seen as bad ass in some way. It's like, wow, oh my gosh, pile number one looks good. That's how I see people reacting to this with the spotlight here at the back of the deck. But either way, your personal style is still coming through as quite sexy, independent, like you're kind of just doing your own thing being your own person, being your own badass, by just being you. And I like that pile, number one. So in the last month, only 41% of my viewers have subscribed to my channel. So if you enjoy my videos so far and would like to stay up to date with what I post daily, hit the subscribe button to not miss out. Thank you to all my subscribers that have been supporting me since the beginning. Your support means the world to me. And I love you so, so, so much. My goal is to reach 100k subscribers by the end of the year and I can't do it without you. So I'm grateful to anybody that's watching and supporting right now. Sending you so much love and gratitude. So spirit guides of pile number one. Spirit guides of pile number one. What people assume about them based off their style and aesthetic. So we have the Ten of Emotions, Ten of Cups. Then we have the Seven of Inspiration in reverse, Seven of Wands reversed. What people assume about them based off their style and aesthetic. Eight of Emotions, Eight of Cups. Seven of Emotions, Seven of Cups. Three of Voices, Three of Swords. So I also feel some extra cards. I'm just going to take them out for now and put them to the side. Okay, so we do have the Page of Swords at the back of the deck. Okay, so the extra cards we have here, I'm just going to put to the side for now and then we'll analyze them as we go along. So in terms of what people assume about you based off your style, 
Some of you may wear glosses and have that cute, nerdy look, but in an endearing way. Um, it's not an insult, but it's cute about you. So some people may assume that you're very intelligent and smart and that you love to learn, that you're a bookaholic, I hear, <laughs> love to read. They may assume that you are always learning new facts about things you're passionate about. They may assume that you got really good marks in school or in college and that you are the smartest at your workspace or wherever you are at, that you have some kind of genius quality to you, all right? And if you don't resonate with that, there's just something about you that looks quite smart in some way, quite put together in some way, where people naturally assume that you're very smart, that you love to learn, that you're very curious about other people as well. And with the Page of Swords, it's kind of giving me that vibe, even if you don't wear glasses. Like, let's say you go outside in corporate wear or in more of a smart, casual way smart business attire kind of clothes. People may just assume these things about you because of your work attire as well, since she is wearing quite professional clothing here. People may also assume that you've gone through your own heartbreak and pain with the Three of Swords because I'm kind of getting... So since it's opposite the graphic tee with Dump Him, you know, maybe some of you dress in ways that show a little bit of your personality in a way. Like if you wear a t-shirt that says something like this, you know, they could assume that you've been through that, that you needed to dumb somebody, leave somebody behind with the eight of cups. You know, you don't have to have a t-shirt that literally says dump him, but there's something about graphic tees giving off this vibe that you've been through pain or that you've had to leave people behind in certain ways. Um, maybe it's your demeanor or the way you carry yourself and it's nothing to do with your clothes or personal style, but maybe it does have something to do with your clothes or personal style. I don't know what it is, but I'm seeing that. People may assume as well that you're very chilled and laid back non-judgmental in ways, that you're curious towards people and genuinely want to get to know them, that you're somebody that they can trust, right? Um, you don't give off a vibe of intimidation to me. You give off this vibe of like, I can let down my guard and trust you. And I think part of it is your energy. But part of it is also the way you dress and your style and you having a trustworthy face. You give me girl next door vibes, boy next door vibes. Like you're kind of that type of person that's not too intimidating. And that can be a good thing. Um, you're kind of giving me this vibe of like people trust you, people want to be close to you, get to know you. You seem approachable in ways it's like people would love to form some kind of connection to you with the Ten of Cups. They assume that maybe you have a big friendship circle, that you have very close-knitted relationships close to your heart, or that you have close friends that are close to your heart. Very few, but loyal friends, devoted friends. They may assume that you're somebody that is monogamous or in a relationship or you want a long-term relationship and you also have a good relationship to yourself especially if you wear sports clothes um you know fitness types of clothes and you go out in public people may assume that you have a good relationship to yourself since she's holding a milkshake here, they may assume that you take care of your body, that you work out. Um, maybe your body also looks good if you don't wear fitness clothes, then they just assume that your body looks good with the clothes you're wearing, right? And um, then they kind of think that 
you take good care of your health and your body, that you're always in the gym, that you're always eating healthy, but then you do still spoil yourself once in a while to treats. You don't restrict yourself. That's what they assume about you based off your style. I'm getting that with this pile, you have a sense of cuteness to you. I'm getting here that people just trust you instantly. People think you're somebody that's in touch with your heart space. A genuine, kind person, loving person. And that a connection with you would be emotionally fulfilling in some way. That they can tell you their secrets, they can let their guard down, they can trust you with anything with their life. And I'm getting here that people assume that not only are you kind-hearted, but you also have this badass confident energy in yourself where you trust in yourself and you're not afraid to walk away from anything that isn't serving you, anybody that isn't treating you right or respecting you. And so people assume that you have self-respect because you have this badass energy in the way that you dress. You give off this vibe of like, from the way that you dress, like I'm kind-hearted, I'm sweet, I'm loving, but do not F with me, do not mess with me because then you'll see flames. That's what I'm hearing in my mind, <laughs> okay? Um, even with a milkshake, like you're very sweet, you're very juicy, very delicious, sweet to be around, sweet to talk to, but do not mess with this because I don't mean to say this, um, but I'm hearing it like spirit is joking around, but I can see how it could be offensive, but I'm just going to say it. I'm sorry. Um, I heard like the sweetness can, can be sweet. And can be delicious, but it can also give you diabetes. So it's like, there is a sense of sassiness here with your pile. Like, I said it, I meant it, and I said it. Um, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying there's a sense of sassiness in this pile. And kind of like a dark humor, or some of you maybe have this type of sense of humor where you don't take things too seriously or people just assume that from the way you're dressed. Like you seem very chilled and laid back where they can make certain jokes with you and you wouldn't get offended. I don't know. That's what I'm getting there. Or you just seem like you have a good sense of humor. You seem like you'd give out funny jokes in some way. You seem like you'd give out not only funny jokes, but smart jokes. So because you're seen as very, very sexy to others, even if you don't show a lot of skin in the way that you dress, and even if you do, it doesn't matter. It's just like your body is sexy with the, with the clothes you wear and your aura, your vibe gives off the sexiness, this badass energy. And so people may assume that you're a flirter, that you love to charm others, that you're very charming with your words, you know how to analyze a person and know exactly what they need to hear to charm them and get what you want. <laughs> and people may assume that you have a lot of people, you know, in your DMs, a lot of people wanting you, a lot of people offering you love with the Seven of Cups, that you have many options available to you now. And if you were to be in a committed relationship, they'd assume that you'd be 100% loyal. But you also have this energy to you where your options aren't limited. If they were treating you badly or you were not happy in the connection, you could leave them today and then you'd have five other people that would want to treat you the way that you'd want to be treated. So that's what people assume about you based off your style. I'm getting this split between the energies where some may assume that you're not the type to commit and that you just want to have fun because I'm hearing girls just want to have fun. You're here for a good time, not a long time. Whereas others may assume that, you know, like you are monogamous and loyal in relationships and you constantly get people trying to be with you, but then you reject them. Or that you have to like reject a lot of people because you're constantly getting love offers, <laughs> okay? Even if it's not true, this is what people assume. 
Okay, we have the star. So this is when you really get dressed up. People see you as the shining star. They're assuming that you are somebody that is like a star. You're somebody that constantly receives love offers with the lovers here. You're somebody that is confident in yourself, shines bright, doesn't dim your light to fit in or for anybody. Okay, they assume that you're somebody that naturally receives recognition, that turns heads wherever you go. They assume that you're somebody that has this kind of effortless look. You know how to shine and still be effortless, but still not try to shine. It's like you don't try to shine, but you shine anyway. That's kind of what people assume about you when they see you dressed up all glamorous, okay? They also assume that you just get a lot of compliments or recognition for your looks. So then next we have strength. So with the strength card, I'm getting that people may assume that you're, yes, physically fit and strong. That you can probably carry heavy things without needing anybody to help you. Um, that you can probably do 100 push-ups and break no sweat. Um, people just assume that you're strong. That you... Yeah, take good care of your body and that you're strong. Um, people may assume that you're independent. Yet people may also assume that you have a sweet side to you, but you're also emotionally strong. That nothing is going to break you. You just have that kind of look to you. We have the five of pentacles. And even when you go through situations where you don't have the things you want with the five of pentacles... You still are independent and strong and you will find a way through it. Um, because you're smart, that's what people assume about you. Like even if you don't have the resources or if you're lacking something or going through a specific challenge, you will always find a solution to it or a way out or a game plan or you'll always find a way to hustle and make it through because of your intelligence. That's what people assume about you. We have the Hermit and we have the Queen of Swords. So people may assume that you're confident in yourself and comfortable with yourself, comfortable with your self-expression, where you don't need to prove to anybody anything. You know that you shine regardless of what you wear. That's kind of what people assume about you because on days when you're not so dressed up, when you're just casual... It's kind of giving this energy of like, you're sexy, you know it, you don't need clues. It's kind of giving this vibe of you're sexy and you know it, you don't need clothes to prove it. You don't need makeup to prove it. You don't need to scream it to the whole world with the Queen of Swords because you know it within. And you give off this vibe of quiet confidence from your look, from the way that you carry yourself and express yourself and your demeanor. And so with the Queen of Swords, people may also assume that you're a good communicator, that you're very smart, that you've learned a lot within this lifetime, that you're very wise. And although you're sweet, you can also speak your truth. You're also a very truthful person with the Queen of Swords. So this is what I have for you, pile number one. I really hope this reading resonated with you. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi there my pile number twos. If you chose this pyrite crystal and the lucky star, then this is your reading. We're going to be taking a look at assumptions people make based off your fashion, style and aesthetic. So please be aware that this is a general reading. Only take what resonates, leave the rest. There are so many of you watching and all of us dress differently. So keep that in mind. Only take what resonates. Okay, let's get started with your reading. We're first going to take a look at your style. Explain what I see here. And then we're going to take a look at the assumptions people make based off this. So, spirit guides of my pile number twos. Um, by the way, if my voice sounds a little bit strange today, it's like I'm having problems with my voice. It's like, I don't know what's going on, but don't worry, I'll be fine. Spirit Guides of Pile number twos. Um, assumptions people make based off their fashion style and aesthetic. We have the Boho Babe. We have the cusp. 
we have the masterpiece. And we have the princess of pop. I also see the forest fairy and the trailblazer is popping out. And we have the perfume queen at the back of the deck. Okay, so with the cusp here, I definitely do feel there are people watching this pile that are very different, right? But you give off the same effect, so take it as it resonates. So for example, there could be women in their 50s watching and women in their 20s watching. You're at very different stages of your life, but you may still relate to this reading. Or there may be somebody that dresses up in a very edgy way here, yet somebody that dresses up in a very girly way, yet you still have the same effect. Um, or there could be some here that like to change and switch up their look. Like, there's sort of like um, a feeling of I can be opposites or both at the same time, or I can change up my aesthetic, my hair, whatever, and just look good either way. It still looks good either way with whatever I do, because it's like I'm putting my own creativity and my own personal energy into what I'm doing. So I see that energy for some of you. Where you're able to switch it up or it's just like you'd be able to relate to this no matter what your personal style is. So I'm seeing some of you like to dress in more spiritual ways, more boho, quote unquote, hippie type of look. Whereas some of you like to dress in more of a girly way. I'm seeing others of you dress in a way that is seen as conventionally attractive to everybody, where everybody would see that as attractive. And then I'm seeing others of you that dress up in a very glamorous and bougie way. And I'm seeing others of you dress up in a very creative way where every piece of fashion is masterpiece to you or you do create certain masterpieces throughout what you wear. And I'm seeing that you are actually a trendsetter in whatever you wear because you put your creativity into whatever you do. You put your own personal like kind of style and personality in whatever you do. But I feel like it's more than just that. It's coming through as you like kind of having fun with it and expressing yourself through it and finding the creativity through it and then it becomes some kind of masterpiece where other people want to copy that or find inspiration from it. So I see you're a little bit of a trendsetter here. You could also have a gorgeous smile and be very conventionally attractive for your looks. So that's what I'm seeing in terms of personal style. What else? Some of you could like to wear heels. Some of you could like to wear boots um, or more like sneakers or flat shoes, but still stylish. Because whatever you wear, you still look stylish, even if it's casual with this image here. It's still like glammed up, even if it's stylish, if that makes sense. Some of you could dress in a more free-spirited way. Like you're very free and like you can make bold decisions and moves with what you wear. And then some of you really go all out with every outfit you wear. Okay. Now we're going to get your tarot cards for the assumptions. In the last month, only 41% of my viewers have subscribed to my channel. So if you enjoy my video so far and would like to stay up to date with what I post daily, hit the subscribe button to not miss out. Thank you to all my subscribers that have been supporting me since the beginning. Your support means the world to me. My goal is to reach 100k subscribers by the end of the year and I can't do it without you. Thank you to everybody that's watching. I'm so, so, so grateful for you. Sending so much love your way. So Spirit Guides of Pile number twos. Spirit Guides of Pile number twos. Assumptions people make about them based off their style and aesthetic. So we have the Eight of Emotions, Eight of Cups. We have the Six of Inspiration, Six of Wands. We have the High Priestess, 
So some of it is based off your vibe with the high priestess and intuition or just based off like the overall vibe of your aesthetic, if it's not their intuition, that they're assuming these things, right? Seven of inspiration in reverse, seven of wands reverse, four of emotions, four of cups. And then we have some extra cards. I'm just going to put them here for now. Okay, I see the Queen of Wands is also popping out. So people think you're very confident. I saw the Devil was popping out, but then it quickly closed itself. So people sometimes assume that, okay, like you're very confident, you're very sexy, that sometimes people will get jealous of you and try to hide it. That's what they assume. They assume that you also have a lot of love interests or offers coming your way with the lovers that people just fall head over heels in love with you and that you have no problem with attracting love as well as money and opportunities your way because of your beauty and your glamorousness but also this type of vibe of you i mean you're coming up as the lucky star here let me just check that these cards are in frame, then I'll tell you what I see here. People don't think that just because you're attractive, you attract opportunities and luck to you. They think it's part of the reason why, that's what they assume. But usually they just assume you already have good luck and success in your life with the Six of Wands here. And King of Pentacles at the back of the deck. This is the Muse of Materials from this tarot deck. And the lucky star here, she's receiving an award. But Pyrite is also a crystal of wealth, which I was very drawn to for your pile because it matched her dress. Because I was going to use a red crystal and then Spirit was like, no, Pyrite. Um, and so it's like people think you're very shiny, like you you stand out, like you have glamour to you in some where even if you're not spending hundreds of dollars or whatever currency you are using, even if you're not spending so much money on your clothes or your outfits or your jewelry, there's something about you that just looks expensive. There's something about your personal style giving off this vibe of lucky girl syndrome, a lucky star, you know, somebody that stands out and shines bright People just assume that you're already successful, that you already have a lot of money flowing to you, and you continuously create masterpieces with whatever you do, that you're talented in ways with the Princess of Pop and the masterpiece, even if you don't see yourself that way. People may assume that about you. People may assume that you are very rich, where you have the money to buy all these expensive perfumes, that you have the money to buy all these expensive dresses or suits or whatever type of clothes, right? I was tasting sushi when I came to your reading, and where I'm from, sushi is quite expensive, but I love it so much, and it's a delicacy here. So what I'm assuming from that is people may assume that you're able to spend a little bit more money on the clothes you wear, the food you eat, restaurants you go to, the booze you drink if you drink, etc, etc, the shoes you buy, your hair when you go to the salon, your handbags. People just assume you have money to spend and that it's not even like a problem for you. You just live in luxury, that you just enjoy the pleasures of life because of that so for most of you watching uh you know you're gonna listen to this and be like what <laughs> um because well I don't know but maybe some of you do have that type of riches or finances or you do have a goal in mind to be able to reach that and maybe they're energetically sensing into your future okay that's what I get from the high priestess, especially if you're somebody that is very goal oriented and you want to be rich and successful in this lifetime. People could assume this about you based off your vibes. Like maybe they are subconsciously tapping into future energies of you without realizing it, right? 
Because when we think of human beings, we're all spiritual beings living a human existence. So even if they're not quote-unquote psychic, they can pick up on information intuitively. And because Pierre Card talks about when she's not yet a girl, not yet a woman in that music video. So maybe you're not ri yet rich, but like maybe you are going to get there one day and people are intuitively sensing that. People are intuitively sensing how lucky you are, how magnetic you are to certain opportunities you want. And with the Eight of Cups, if you're not there yet, maybe something's still going to happen where you're going to let go of certain blockages that prevent you from being your most successful, most rich self, right? So, like mental blocks, um, limited beliefs, things like that. Or what I'm getting from this Eight of Cups, it looks like she's walking, right? And there is an eclipse right behind her, which brings transformations. And I'm almost sensing like you're walking towards it, but you don't know that you're going to find it at the other side. Because this, the Eight of Cups is walking towards the Six of Cups, so it's like you're letting go of the previous lifestyle you once lived and walking towards the success, but you don't know you're walking towards it yet. That's a message for some of you, and I just felt a solar plexus and sacral chakra pain. So it may be also like letting go of blocks to do with, like, am I worthy of this? Um, what will people think of me? Will people be jealous of me? Um... Like, am I a bad person for wanting money or success? Or, I don't mean to turn this into an advice reading, but um, something to do with the self-worth and the confidence. Like, not feeling deserving of it or not feeling your greatest receiving it. Uh, something about that's coming through. So I guess what we see here is people assume that you live a rich lifestyle, that you have an overflowing amount of money in your pocket, your wallet is too full to even carry all the cash you have, you probably have a safe in your home, you probably live in a very beautiful home, you probably drive a really nice car, you probably... Um, you know, are making a lot of money each month, probably have your own business, CEO vibes or boss babe vibes, <laughs> okay? And it's like people just assume these things. People assume you're talented at something. They don't know what it is, but they assume you're talented at something, okay? And people also assume that you have all this money, you're very lucky, you're very happy with your life, but you're also very very free-spirited and humble and down to earth, even though you have all this money, that you can still relate to people that are quote-unquote normal, right? And I see them thinking that about you, like you're, you're a person with a lot of money and success, but you're still generous and you still have a good heart and you still care for others and you're free-spirited in ways and you're non-judgmental, you're not like somebody that's stuck up um, people can assume that you can relate to others because maybe they assume that you were once, um, not having all that money, but then something in your life changed where you had that. So that's kind of like what people assume about you. People may assume that you're very talented at something and you're not satisfied with where you're at. People may assume because you look so quote-unquote perfect that you are perfect, perfectionistic and perfect isn't enough for you. That's what I get from the Four of Cups. Um, people assume that... What am I getting from Seven of Wands reversed? I'm hearing the song, You Don't Know You're Beautiful. So people may assume that... Some people may assume that you're very confident in yourself and you've had like an intense glow up in your life and like you know you're confident, you know you're sexy, but then some people may assume that you don't see it yourself, that you're chasing perfection, that you don't see the beautiful masterpiece you are. Um, maybe because you look perfect they think you're chasing perfection. I hope that makes sense. It's weird but that's what they assume. Um, and then I'm also getting a vibe here of like you're talented but you haven't found your talent yet or you're talented but you haven't 
fully seen your capabilities or potential yet or you haven't fully reached your peak yet of your talent like maybe you know you're talented but you haven't yet full fully seen the masterpiece yet you've created masterpiece masterpieces in whatever you're talented at but you haven't fully seen your masterpiece yet or the results or the compliments People may assume you're so perfect and pretty or hot or handsome that some people will assume that, okay, like you get a lot of compliments from others, whereas some people will assume that you don't get a lot of compliments from others because you already know you're good looking. Okay, weird and contradictory, but that's what I see. So we have the fool. This is like this energy of free spiritedness you being very carefree. So that's what people think of you with this full energy, like a free-spirited person, a carefree person. You have no kind of worries at all. Even if you take risks, even if you fail at certain things you take big risks on, you still have a backup stability that you can fall on. You still have security that you can fall back up on. That you still have money saved up where if you take a big risk in business, you're still going to be okay. You're not going to lose it all. That's kind of what people get with the fool. Like you can take big risks and big leaps of faith and you won't even worry about it. The five of wands. This is what I was speaking about with the jealousy. So people may assume that a lot of people are jealous of you and that people are standoffish towards you, that some people, um, or that you have like a hard time making friends sometimes because some people are just always in competition with you. That's what I'm getting with the five of wands, that you may even have competitors when it comes to your talent and the things you're good at, the things you have strengths at. So we have the sun. People assume you live this happy, perfect life, like everything is sunshine and rainbows in your life and there's never a rainy day in your existence. We have the Ace of Wands. People assume that you're very sexy and you think you're very sexy and you have no problems with confidence or not feeling your greatest with the Eight of Swords. Like you never feel like, oh my gosh, am I pretty enough or insecure or anything like that so it's weird some people presume pres presume like you're kind of chasing perfection whereas some people perceive you to not have any imperfections at all to be so perfect that you don't have any sort of insecurities at all or doubts about yourself at all that life is just easy for you that you're always motivated when it comes to your goals and dreams and desires because you're getting the rewards for it. You're getting recognition for it. So you're never like in the stuck place of like, I don't know what to do next because you're always motivated and happy to do what you do because you're rewarded for it. With the lucky star, we have justice. We have the seven of pentacles. So people assume that it's taken a lot of time for you to build this stability up for yourself, this wealth for yourself, to build this kind of reputation of a lucky star, a name for yourself. People could also assume like they could see you in a spotlight or as a content creator in some way. People assume that you're very honest and trustworthy with the justice card. And a lot of people find you genuine in a way, whereas a lot of some people find it challenging to trust you because they think they think that you wouldn't get their situation where where they're stuck in. Like, let's say somebody wants to be friends with you and they're really struggling with money and they're assuming you're rich. Um, this is making me laugh. Um, there's always one pile where people assume you're rich. Um, <laughs> even in the last assumptions video I did, but it's like, they assume that you wouldn't get along with them or understand their situation because they're in that stuck situation that like, you wouldn't understand the hardships they're going through. We have the four of swords. 
And what I'll say about your pile is if other people are assuming this of you, think of it like they're secretly manifesting this for you, pile number two. <laughs> we have the two of cups because if other people think you're like this, then they're manifesting that, putting that thought out into the universe, right? And then you're able to receive that faster because you're not just manifesting it for you. Other people are manifesting it for you too. And you know those like witchy movies like Charmed um, where it's like the power of three or something. <laughs> it's like that with manifestation. So we have the Wheel of Fortune, the Ten of Cups, the Moon, and the Emperor. So people assume that you're going to leave a legacy behind for your children. Some people may have assumed that you have some kind of hidden secret with the moon. Um, I'm even getting an assumption that you married somebody that was rich or that you come from a rich family. This is like wild, but this is what I'm seeing. People assume that your life is just so comfortable and easy and there's no struggles or frustrations or challenges that you go through in life. That things just come easy to you, that you're just always happy in your life, always emotionally fulfilled. People will assume that you also have like a romantic partner in your life that you've been with for a long time. Because you're so attractive, they assume that you have no trouble finding love. That people just throw themselves at you. Some people may assume that you live a double life and you have a lot of secrets or baggage because how is it that a person can be this perfect? There must be something about them that we don't see. Um, and then some people will assume that you have something big to do in this lifetime, something big to share with the world, with the princess of pop and the wheel of fortune. Even if it's not singing like Britney here, <laughs> Maybe it's just something big you're going to share with the world that's going to change the world in some way. Where well, you're going to be the number one person that's remembered for what you do. Leaving a legacy, leaving something innovative behind. Because you're very innovative with your fashion choices where others will copy it. People assume you're going to be innovative with whatever you do in your career. Where you're going to leave a name and a legacy and an imprint behind on this earth. Where Spirit is showing you like Marilyn Monroe. Everybody remembers Marilyn Monroe, Monroe because of the imprint she left behind. Because she was such a big superstar, you know? So that's kind of what I'm getting from your pile. So this is your reading pile too. Wild reading. <laughs> Wild assumptions. But this is what I have for you. I really hope this reading resonated with you. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi there my pile number threes, if you chose this Rose Quartz Crystal and the Goddess card, then this is your reading. We're going to be taking a look at assumptions people make about you based off your fashion style and aesthetic. So the card you chose is the Goddess. Please be aware that this is a general reading, only take what resonates, leave the rest. There's something about you that is quite divine, that is quite goddess-like. In the way that you dress. You could have this very romantic kind of appearance to you in the way that you look, in the way that you dress, where clothes just look very flowy and romantic on you and they look elegant on you. You're just seen as divine, a goddess in some way. Let's get the rest of your cards. So spirit cards of my pile Number threes, we're first going to look at your style and aesthetic and then we're going to look at the assumptions people make based off this. So assumptions people make based off their style and aesthetic. So we have the record breaker. I love this card. I've never seen this card before because this is um, quite new in some way. This oracle deck, we have the badass. Love that. We have the starlet. Ooh, I love this. And we have the visionary. Wow. So for your pile, I'm getting this vibe of 
For some of you, you could dress in more glamorous ways that is definitely making people look at you like, wow, like you have this kind of star-like quality to you. You know, the way you dress with your fashion style, even if you dress in a more casual way like this card here, it still looks quite good in ways. And it's like people can see you have a love for fashion, a love for art. We have the flight attendant at the back of the deck um, where you have this kind of visionary quality to you in the way that you dress. You have a creative potential and creative ability when it comes to fashion and style and the way you do your makeup and hair that is quite new that people don't see much and people want to take inspiration from that. If you dress in more of a casual way it still looks very chic and elegant and still very like wow you have that wow effect on people and something about your smile looks so good i know we're talking about fashion and style but something about your smile looks so good something about the jewelry wear also accentuates your fashion style and you're very you're very sexy you're seen as very sexy you're seen as a badass but still like soft and flowy in your appearance in your in the way that you dress and like your sexiness kind of makes people fantasize about you like here we have this kind of sexy teacher look here we have this flight attendant look it, it's like people kind of fantasize about you in different things maybe even fantasize about having a baby with you or you know having some kind of relationship with you people see you as a type of person that is very attractive in your beauty but then the clothes just make you even more attractive right and with the starlet here it's like whatever you wear it just makes you shine even more people see a star quality within you where they can imagine you in movies where they can imagine you because I see you also have like a very expressive face. They can imagine you in movies. They can imagine you in fashion magazines. They can imagine you being a fashion designer. Like that's what I'm getting from this pile. We have the record breaker. So it's like you break records. You kind of like have that visionary quality that blows people's minds away. And you're very badass at what you do. Whatever you do, you have that badass quality. You have a real talent here. I feel like some of you could be seen as like having that talent where they can see you as a fashion designer or somebody that can create content and show different fashion styles and things that are quite iconic, I hear. You have that iconic look. Some of you like to, you know, follow trends or just create your own trends where other people want to copy that. Um, some of you like to wear long boots that look very sexy on you. Some of you like to wear more heels, um, but it still looks good. Whereas some of you like to wear more like flat shoes, but it matches your clothes. And even when you wear casual clothes like jeans and a top, it still looks so good on you. And when you wear dresses for the woman here, it's just so flowy. It falls perfectly on your curves. It, it makes your body look so good. Even when you go to work, you still have that sexiness to you. Um, and like you shine in your own way. That's what I'm seeing. People like to talk about your beauty and the way that you dress. And I even see this pile is very photogenic where when you like post a picture with your clothes, people are like wondering where did she or he get that outfit i want to buy that too so you have that type of energy that is very influential in some way where other people see you doing something and they want to do it too very good very cool okay now we're going to take a look at your tarot cards so in the last month only 41 percent of my viewers have subscribed to my channel so if you enjoy my videos so far and would like to stay up to date with what i post daily hit the subscribe button to not miss out thank you to all my subscribers that have been supporting me since the beginning your support means the world to me my goal is to reach 100k subscribers by the end of the year and i can't do it without you thank you so much for all your support for watching and i'm sending you so much love Okay, so spirit guides of pile number threes, assumptions people make based off their fashion style and aesthetic. So for you, I'm getting like coordination, like your outfits match well from head to toe. It's like 
You know, some people you can see they're wearing something, but it doesn't match well. You, you don't have that problem. Like everything matches from head to toe. Your makeup matches your outfits. Your hair matches your outfits. Your shoes match your outfits, your bags, like whatever this is. Even the nails for the woman here, that's kind of what I'm getting. And your body looks good in whatever you wear. So it's like your beauty actually accentuates the fashion styles you wear. Because I'm getting like you can wear something and pull it off that not many people can wear and pull off. So it's like people just assume that you have this energy where you are like in the spotlight where all eyes are on you all the time. Where people are constantly giving you compliments. People may assume that, like, they can see you being a content creator or being some kind of star or, like I said earlier, being somebody that uses your visionary quality in something creative or, you know, they can kind of assume that they can see you being a flight attendant because flight attendants are usually very beautiful, but they also have to have that intelligence to be able to have all the knowledge and how to be a flight attendant and work with people and things like that. So people could assume that. People could assume that, you know, you use that badass creative visionary quality in whatever you do for work where you can make a lot of success for yourself because you have creativity in the way that you dress, but you can also use it in um, whatever you do corporately, business-wise. People may assume that a lot of people try to ask you out on dates. People may assume, like, people see you as marriage material, wifey material, husband material, like, somebody they want to have children with. We have the Wheel of Fortune. I'm going to put this here. Assumptions people make based on their style and aesthetic, the star, under the starlet, like, do you see? I cannot make this up. People think that you have the star-like quality, that you're meant to be in the public eye, that you have some kind of big purpose to share your vision in some way, that you're going to change the world in some way with this visionary quality, whether that be actually being an artist, whether that be content creation, whether that be somebody that is like a social media influencer or somebody that... Um, makes music because she's singing here or people could assume that you could be somebody that just does something where you're in the public eye or you're getting recognition for your skills for your talents for your visionary qualities and that you shine like a star that people almost like look at you and assume that you could have that celebrity type of look to you I mean we have the star and the starlet like this cannot be made up. If you were drawn to this pile, you were drawn to it for a reason. Okay, we have the Nine of Swords. So people assume that a lot of people feel nervous around you, try to impress you, that you're just so beautiful and attractive or handsome that, you know, people just feel nervous in front of you and you know, slip over the words, feel clumsy in front of you, <laughs> I'm seeing somebody trip, you know, it's kind of like you have that vibe or that look that makes people assume that. What else? We have the Eight of Materials, Eight of Pentacles. So there's something about you with the Eight of Pentacles where in your career, people can see you creating a lot of success, a lot of recognition for yourself, receiving some kind of recognition for whatever it is you do, mastering your talents or gifts. People see you as talented and gifted in ways and they see you mastering that energy where they maybe even see you to be like that type of person that can do many things because of this visionary quality you have. We have the Muse of Voices, which is the King of Swords. So people naturally assume that you're very intelligent and smart and that makes you badass in some way because it's like, how do you come up with such great ideas, such innovative ideas, such creative ideas? You are a visionary, you have an amazing mind and it works in very miraculous ways that people want to understand and 
then they naturally assume that you're just very smart or that you studied something to do with fashion or style or creativity or that you just naturally have a talent of some kind, okay? Whether you believe that or not, this is your pile because you were drawn to it for a reason. So people assume that you not only have this glamorous star-like quality to you, but you also are very smart and intelligent. And, you know, we see this woman dancing over here, so people could assume that you, again, like, have that creative talent to dance, to sing, to do something more creative. Um, even if you work in an office, people could see you as that type of person that comes up with the ideas that are like, wow, nobody's ever thought of that idea. Let me pull some more cards. What else do people assume about pile number three based off their style and aesthetic? We have the Ace of Pentacles. So people can assume that you get a lot of opportunities your way because of the way that you look. So for example, you know, maybe you are very conventionally attractive and then they assume that, you know, like you walk around in the mall and somebody that is a model like scout or agency, you know, looks at you and wants to give you an opportunity because they're looking at you, staring at you, seeing that star quality within you and like, Wondering if you can model their looks for them. I'm kind of getting that energy. The devil is coming out with the seven of swords. People may assume that you have a lot of people that are jealous of you, that just um, treat you differently for no reason, that try to um, not help you in ways with a six of pentacles reverse at the back of the deck because they're jealous of you, because you have all these qualities about you that make you you, that make you shine. I'm really getting that quite strongly because the five of wands is also popping out here. So people may assume that people get very insecure around you, very nervous around you, that you almost like steal the attention in some way and that yeah, people just are very standoffish towards you and jealous and gossip about you and things like that. That's what people assume about you. People also assume that you love to learn about fashion and style and um, maybe you watch a lot of YouTube tutorials on how to do your makeup or maybe you watch a lot of YouTube videos or Instagram or TikToks about fashion and style and you're constantly finding inspiration from different things or Pinterest and things like that. So people see you being like that. People may also assume that you're a very curious person and you love to learn. Again, that intelligent nature is coming through. So we have the high priestess. So people may assume that you're somebody that gets your ideas from a higher place where you maybe meditate on an idea and it comes to you or you kind of like with a high priestess, I'm getting like meditate or do yoga or do little things that help you have your mind clear so that you get good ideas. We have the Ace of Cups. So people may assume that not only are people jealous of you, but a lot of people want to be in a relationship with you or be friends with you because you're so gorgeous and because you have such a good style and aesthetic. We do have the Empress Reverse, which is about insecurity. So again, that insecurity is coming up. People may assume that a lot of people feel insecure around you. We have the Nine of Cups reverse. So I'm kind of seeing a theme here where people wish they could have what you have and people assume that a lot of people feel like sad around you or feel not good about themselves around you or compare themselves to you because you have what they wish for. We have the Sun card. People could assume you are very happy with your life. People could assume that you know, things are just easy for you and that your life is just so happy and so fulfilling that whatever you do, because of your creative vision and your creative spark and the passion you have and the way you're able to express yourself, people just assume that you're naturally fulfilled, that you're achieving something in your life, you know? So we have the page of inspiration, which is the page of wands. People assume that you're a very expressive person, that you're somebody that is very unique and authentic to you. People assume that you're somebody that is very free-spirited, where you don't take life too seriously, and you kind of just 
go with the flow of life. You you have that playful type of vibe. Although you're somebody that seems like you can achieve a lot with the six of wands coming out, it's like because you have that playful quality to you, you get very good ideas naturally because of that. Um, because you allow yourself to have fun and be free and things like that. Okay, we um, also with a catcher, people assume that you're very independent. We have the muse of inspiration. So people see you as a muse and inspirer in some way. The magician. People assume that you're you know, going to create a lot of success in this lifetime, going to create a lot of happiness and fulfillment based off whatever you're passionate about and whatever you do. People assume that you're very talented, as I said before. The Six of Swords, people assume that this talent is going to change your life in some way, even if you do not see it yet in one way or another. Then we have Justice and the Three of Swords. So the Six of Pentacles is still behind at the back of the deck. Okay, so I keep getting that vibe of like insecurities, people being insecure around you. People may assume that you're very trustworthy and honest. That you don't ever lie or, you know, be deceitful towards anybody. But that people may sometimes feel like very sad around you because they wish they had what you had. And then kind of like make you seem... Like, you are the bad guy. People may assume that. People may assume that you're very kind. Um, and you, like, spread joy wherever you go because of your fashion style. Like, this very happy-go-lucky person that you bring other people up. You uplift others, right? And definitely inspire others. People may assume that you gatekeep. I just heard the word gatekeep. <laughs> So people may assume that like, let's say you wear something today, right? And somebody asks you, oh, where did you get that top? That you'd be like, oh, I can't remember because like, you're just so good at what you do. And like, you like the outfits you wear that you wouldn't give it away to anybody. You wouldn't give away your secret sauce or your secret recipe to anybody, whether that's true or not, like, this is just what people assume about you. And people assume that you get a lot of people trying to talk to you when you're out in public as well, trying to compliment you, you know, um, that kind of energy is coming up a lot. People also assume that you're not afraid to change and switch things up when it comes to your style and aesthetic and the things you do. You don't get creative blocks, that's what they assume, because you're just always changing and switching things up to make things interesting always. People also assume you're always on the lookout for opportunities where you don't ever miss them. So this is what I have for you, Pile 3. This is the assumptions people make of you based off your fashion style and aesthetic. So I really hope this reading resonated with you. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.